Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's football game. We're going to send it down to the field for the anthem. Great job with the National Anthem by the Midland High Meister Singers. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Midland High homecoming football game as the Midland Chemics take on the Saginaw High Trojans. This is Dave Marsh bringing you all the action tonight from Midland Community Stadium along with Coach Frank Aldemore as the uh, Midland High band is on the field and the Chemics uh, head out onto the field. And... Uh, Coach Midland High is uh, comes into this game with five and one overall record, clinching their 38th straight winning season. Unbelievable uh, mark by the Chemics, and they'll be taking on a Trojan team at one and five. And so, on paper, uh, Midland looks to be the overwhelming favorite here tonight. Well, Midland is the overwhelming favorite. I mean, you have a team that's. Uh, in the process of rebuilding, and that, that's a surprise because Saginaw High has always had great, great talent. But we see only 25 players on the sideline for Saginaw. Obviously, they've, they've got some uh, personnel issues. They have some good players, but there was a time when you played Saginaw High, you were going to look at 13 Division I players <laughs> on on their roster, and that, and you know, and you, of course, you got some pros. Uh, a number of players that m made it into the pros. Most recently, Lamar Woodley is playing for the Steelers. So you got this this situation of past history that the the program has fallen into decay, mm -hmm. and for whatever the reason, the decay, and a lot of it has to do with uh, school population. The numbers at Saginaw High are about 900. So, uh, you know, you got that situation going on. And then you have an established program like Midland that is has this fantastic record of winning seasons and with all doubt going into the playoffs and could go into the playoffs in the number one seed, which is a home, home field all the way through. So, uh, you, you know, it's going to be that kind of a game where you, you just... Uh, We'll see what Saginaw can do, but in my mind, I would not be surprised to see a running clock in the second half. Well, Midland High, you mentioned, uh, is uh, having another tremendous year, approaching the uh, Marysville state record of consecutive winning seasons. Um, I think they're just one short of that record at this point, and need one more win to make the playoffs yet again. Midland High comes in. The third-ranked team offensively in the Saginaw Valley League North, 2,145 total yards for Saginaw, Saginaw High, ranks last in that category at 1425. Midland also the top defensive team in the conference. And so Saginaw will have their hands full, no question, head coach Donald Durrett uh, putting together his game plan. And a lot of the game plan will revolve around senior Keon Addison. Um, Midland coach Eric Metner 
expressed this week, that's a, a real focal point for their defense is to contain uh, number 25, as you'll see out there. Well, he has 733 yards, which is, uh, you know, a very good season. Dave, that one number, you know, we talked about uh, Midland High having 2,145 total yards. 2,500 yards was a spectacular offensive season uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, uh, 2,500 yards, you're going to have that three-fourths of the season. Uh, the, the, the most interesting thing of all, though, is that Saginaw High is at the bottom in defense. So we're ready to go with our keys of the game. And uh, flash that up as soon as we're ready. And we're gonna start off with the Midland High. And of course, for Midland High, it always starts off with this good field position. And that will be a problem for Saginaw. If, if Midland gets good field position, this game will be over fast. Number two, turn Williams loose. Uh, I believe you've got the most uh, exciting football player uh, at Midland High in a long time. And it just, I just like to see him get the ball more. Just turn him loose. Every time he touches the ball, I think he's going to score. And score early, score often. That would be my philosophy all the way through. For Saginaw, and I know this is uh, an old story, avoid the turnovers. You just can't give the ball to middle in a good field position. And this is surprising. Run the football because you got to slow the game down. you got to allow the game to come back to you. And you've got to control Midland's quarterback. You can't let him have a free reign out there throwing the ball. Number one, Jakari Cooper on the kick return. He gets belted at the 31-yard line. Good kick, kick coverage by, by the Trojans Cooper there as that Midland offense will take the field to begin the ball game. Midland uh, will be quarterbacked by Tanner Gross, number 18. Tanner having a terrific year, really, and uh, um, he's put up some really great numbers in his first season as the starter. He is a senior, and uh, number five, as you mentioned, Will Williams, uh, the lone setback in the backfield, will take the opening handoff. Juts up the middle. He's got a big gain. He cuts it back outside, and he's just tripped up into Saginaw territory, finally brought down by Anthony Robinson. But uh, there's that Williams there's showing that great explosion. Example. I mean, he found the little crease, got up in the crease, made two cuts, and just would have run away from the guy had he known he was there. He was looking out in front. The guy caught him from behind. A little confusion there. Midland uh, jumped early. The uh, Midland employing that hurry up offense. Officials will confer. It looked like Midland may have jumped the gun a bit. Look for the indication. In fact, it is a false start of the Chemex, so it'll be first and 15 at the 42 yard line. Mentioned DeLong, or uh, Gross at quarterback, the wide receivers, number three, the sophomore Luke DeLong, and uh, number one, Jakari Cooper. Um, also a primary receiver and Austin Ear, number 11, is their number one receiver. He is a big target. Williams get the handoff met immediately. Nice job defensively there by Elijah Woods for Saginaw to bring up a second and long. Elijah Woods just ran right by the Midland blocker. He, he has quickness. I, I think that's the key thing here for Saginaw. They do have quickness. But they're not very, there's only one person in their front line there that has the kind of size that is able to combat Midland size. Gross barking out the signals. Looks for DeLong, got it, hauls it in. It's going to be a first down. Beautifully thrown ball, and DeLong doing a nice job of elevating and hauling down that pass. Ball down to the 25 yard line. It's a beautiful pass, has great touch to it. Uh, nice and soft, great catch by DeLong. They allowed it to happen right in there. Nice catch, able to come down, make a great play. First and 10, Chemex. In the early stages. Gross, back to pass. Looking downfield, goes deep to ear, and he drops the ball. 
had it right uh, there. It would have been a first down, but uh, the uh, normally reliable ear, he is actually the leading re receiver in the second of Valley League North with 30 catches coming in, 489 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, uncharacteristic by ear there, but I'm sure we'll, we'll see him targeted plenty more times this game. Williams takes the handoff, cuts left side, cuts back up, rambles down to the 15, and it is going to be a Kemick first down. Nice run, he got a nice hole there on the left side and uh, darted through enough to pick up that first down yardage. Number 83, Alex Welter is the fullback. Up and sets off in a flanker and you'll see him come in motion frequently. Lead blocker this time for Williams. Williams tries, eludes the first tackler, but then is hauled down after a two yard Hello, pickup. Well, they're giving the ball to Williams. They sure I are. mean, they're giving it to just like I ask. Please give him the football and he is getting it. He's getting the football. The offensive line starting for the Chemex at center 55, Austin Rapanis. Left guard is 52, Nate Fisher. Right guard, 68, Matt Schnurr. Right tackle is 54, Zach Stern. And at left tackle, 56, Jacob Dostel. Quick pass to Williams. It is incomplete. Try to run a quick pass out of the backfield. Uh, just unable to hold on to it, so it'll bring up a third and nine for the Chemex. 9.46 remaining here in the first quarter. This is the opening drive of the game. Saginaw, uncharacteristically, does not gain tackle, at least in this first series. In the past, you've always seen four or five or six Saginaw, but now Williams is being tackled by one guy. Takes the handoff, Gross, looking downfield. Throws the corner, touchdown, Luke DeLong. <laughs> Good patience by Gross surveying the field. I don't know if that was his primary target on that play, but uh, found DeLong streaking across There's, the middle of the field and hits him for the score. This is quite a mismatch here. You have DeLong with, with very good size against a very undersized defensive back and throws the ball up into the air and it's a touchdown. Good pass. Good pass. I, love, I love the touch. Of, of gross. Philip Wandor, number 14, to kick the extra point. Ryan Lynch is the holder. Kick is up, and it is good. Excellent. Just like that, the Chemex straight first, go on top seven to nothing here with 940 remaining in the first quarter. Wandor on the extra point, he's having a terrific season for the Chemex kicking the ball. Just another in their long line of great kickers. And uh, has five field goals on the year. Uh, just does a tremendous job for Midland High. As always, special teams play gives, seems like every year gives that gives an Midland edge. an edge. Gives Midland an edge. Having the kicker and, and, and the other second part of that is you can have the kicker, but if you don't have the coverage, it doesn't count, and Midland has always had outstanding kickoff coverage, always. So Wonder, Wonder will do the kickoff duties. Number one, Marquise Goodman back to receive along with Keon Addison. Line drive kick fielded by Addison at the two. Heads to the right side looking for a lane, cuts up. Good job on the coverage by the Chemex. Brought down by number 36, Tanner Diamond. And uh, that will have the Trojans start off on the 22 yard line. Well, we'll get a pretty good idea of what's gonna happen in this first series because we're probably gonna see a, a pretty steady diet of Kenyon Addison. Edison averaging 7.2 yards per carry, impressive. And uh, four touchdowns on the season. Raymond Beatty, number seven, is the quarterback. Beatty. 
Meaty back to pass. He's going deep on the first play, and he's got his man. What a play by the Trojans. Beautifully thrown ball hauled in by Michael Roden. Michael Roden, the ball thrown up in the air. And it kind of wobbled a little bit in the air, just enough to, that the defender was unable to find the ball. And you'll see it ends up being what is known as a back shoulder throw, but it wasn't meant to be a back shoulder throw. Good coverage, but really, by the Very Kings, good but, coverage uh, and, and an outstanding catch. He threw it with enough loft where uh, Roden was able to uh, run under the ball. So the Trojans into Kemic territory at the 43. Handoff goes to Goodman, and he is snuffed down immediately. Jared Lachance on the stop, number 20. He's a little quick hitter. This is the old 1992 Saginaw offense. Uh, this is something they ran between 92 and the year 2000. It's not wide open. It's a matter of fact, it's a, it's a split backfield, T formation, two receivers. This time and now they're in an eye. Now they moved into an eye. That's, uh, mixing it up a little bit here yeah. on second and 10. Handoff, oh man, great job by the Midland defense. That's gonna be Michael Alexander leading the charge, number 21, Alexander. Terrific player. If you have one great player, Midland will stop you. You got to have more than one. You got to have two, three great players for them to be in trouble. Alexander, the leader of this tremendous uh, linebacking core. He's number 21, 53, Ben Luzar, and 46, Matt McInerney are the linebackers for the Chemics. Here on third and ten. Back to pass. Little dump pass overthrown. I don't think he would have gone far anyway. Great coverage by Alexander there. Yeah, Alexander picked him up right out of the backfield without any trouble. Remember what I said in our keys of the game. For Saginaw High to be successful, they have to be able to run the football. And right now, they are negative yardage on, on three of their carries. So... So after that big first play, the Kemic defense holds and uh, will force the Trojans to punt. Beatty, the quarterback, is the punter. Williams back deep to receive the kick for the Kemics. High snap, gets it off. Nice punt. It will, oh, <laughs> it took a second of bounce. And Williams uh, then pays the price. The really made the right decision. Thought it would would bounce in the end Absolutely. zone, and it bounced back. And then it was a heads-up play to to pick it up, and uh, still able to get it beyond the ten yard line. I wish my golf shots would do that. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, the advantage of that long pass is that it changed field position. Now Midland's back in the hole, and, and they could easily come out of the hole. Obviously, they had an easy time scoring their touchdown. But it's just a longer drive. You got a 90 yard drive now. Groke's calling the signals. Back to pass. He's looking downfield. He's going deep. And he's got his man hauled in by Jakari Cooper. So giving Saginaw a taste of their own medicine on the first play of the drive. A beautifully thrown ball again by Gross. Take another look at I'm this one. Very impressed with this throw right here. Lot, he has all the time in the world first, and the receiver does break open. Excellent catch. So getting into Trojan territory at the 47 with seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Williams with the carry. Breaks a couple of tackles and scoots up ahead for about an eight-yard gain. Made by number 52, and Midland uh, quickly changing that play. field position Second we were talking about. Again, it's, you know, one man, one tackle. And, and for the most part, Williams broke two tackles there from two separate people. The, the, the rush to get to the ball is not there with Saginaw. Williams now with over 700 yards rushing on the season. He's got 11 touchdowns on the ground. Gets the ball again off the right side. Scoots ahead. Great burst. 
Nice acceleration by Williams. Hit that hole hard. And will pick up another first down. Middle of the offensive line is just manhandling Saginaw's front. Saginaw, they're just, they're, they're just blocking them. I mean, they're just on them and staying on them. It's a beautiful job Stern, right there 54, by 54 Stern, Stern yes. Here's Williams again. Cuts left, cuts right, still on his feet. And he will take it inside the 10 for another first down. Run by Williams for another first down. Inside do have an injured player on the field. Looks like Tackle here. 10, for and uh, he looks to be in a lot of pain right now. The officials time out on the field as the uh, trainers attend to Austin Ear. Hopefully he's... Uh, he is okay here. You mentioned having a, a great, great season. Year. You know, this is, uh, I was looking at the stats earlier and I was shocked that Saginaw and Bay City Central, two teams that, two teams that, oh yeah. Yeah, he was kind of collateral damage. He was the end of the play. Williams was just tackled on to his knee as he was blocking. Mm. I was looking at these stats again, and I, I'm shocked to see Bay City Central and Saginaw, two traditionally tough defensive teams at the bottom. Uh, to see Bay City Central at the bottom of the Saginaw Valley League in defense is an absolute shock. Yeah. It, just, it, just, it just can't happen. And Saginaw, and then the Bay City Western, uh, who's always had a pretty good defensive unit, and their records show it. I mean, your defense shows your record. At the top of the list, you take a look. You got Midland, Arthur Hill, Dow, Mount Pleasant. Yep. Well, Ear walks off under his own power very gingerly. And he will. Uh, ben Elliott, number 33, will take his place in the Chemic lineup. First and goal, Chemic from the nine. Six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Williams, the ball carrier again, juts up Williams ahead to about the seven. Tackle made by number 10, Steve Mason. Steve Mason on the tackle for the Trojans. And the knocking on the door again. Again, turning of that of poor field position into great field position and, and into scoring territory. Welter in motion sets left. Gross is going to keep it on the bootleg. Cuts up head, dives into the touchdown. end zone. Touchdown, Chemex. Great play call by Midland High. It's been a steady dose of Williams. This time he fakes the handoff and runs the bootleg to the right side. And had plenty of real estate. You can see the handoff. The defense commits to Williams. Gross able to find the edge. Cuts back up and in for that Pater. Was, that was a very good run. He looted the end and then uh, juked out the defensive back. And so, Wandor back to kick the or er, yeah to kick the extra point. It is up and it is good once again and so with 524 remaining in the first quarter midland goes on top 14 to nothing you see the uh, cheerleaders pom-pom and the flag runner celebrating the chemic touchdown here on homecoming and you're watching the saginaw high midland high homecoming game on mps tv in midland you can find MPS TV on channel 98 on Charter Communications and through channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. This game will be cablecast on several dates coming up, including Friday night, October 11th at 11.30. You can see some of the other times on your screen right there. Uh, there's more dates and times to follow. You can also check the Midland Public Schools website at www mpsk12.mi.us. The coverage of this game was made possible in part with donations from Little Caesars Pizza and the Foxcroft Friends of NCTV. And uh, Wandor 
We'll do the kickoff duties again. Boots it again down to about the five yard line. Oh, he's got a crease. He's dangerous. One man to beat, and he beats him. And he's gonna go the distance. Keon Addison, we talked about him plenty in the pregame and early on, and he just showed how dangerous he can be. I, this is quite a run, but you know, this is completely different than what they did in the first kickoff, and that is he caught the ball in the same spot and tried to run across the field. He is a north-south runner. Beautiful run here, and then just uh, a, a brush block on the kicker. Coach, that, ru that's, that return was set up beautifully. It was. I mean, they just they had it, it made the crease, and he hit the hole, he and got into the that hole. was it. On the one before, he tried to run all the way across the field and got minimal amount of yardage. Just go north and south. That's what you try to tell him. So Beatty will do the extra point duties for the Trojans. We're told Jalen Parham is the holder. High snap, the kick is blocked. See, that did not have much chance. The high snap and the chemics were just all over it. And so Midland High on top now 14 to six. So a quick, quick strike by the Trojans uh, tightens things up significantly. And Kemic offense will uh, take over again. Now, Kimmick offense has looked very sharp here in their first two possessions, scoring both times. That was a real run back. Yeah. That, you know, that's classic, beautiful run back. The, uh, I mentioned Addison with uh, similar stats to Williams, at least in yardage, not as many touchdowns. Um, obviously a key part of their offensive attack. Addison also has nine receptions Ladies on the year for 112 yards. Their leading score now with five touchdowns on the season. And so Millen will receive the kickoff. Again, number one, Jakari Cooper back deep along with Williams. The line drive kick is uh, fielded by Jordan Wilson, he's a sophomore. Cut the line drive and scoot up head. Nice return for Wilson. Gives Kemmis good field position at the 40. You know, with five minutes to go in the first quarter, we've got some scoring going on yeah. and a lot more coming. Good to see Austin, Austin Ear back in the lineup. The replay looked like uh, it like, could have been a lot worse. Been but serious, yes. It's a big relief for uh, See him out there, and all the Kemic faithful, glad to see him out back in the lineup as well. Gross is with the keeper, cuts it outside, still on his feet. Nice run by Gross. Very elusive run, and good six, seven yard run. Game. Play looked like it was gonna be stopped for next to nothing, but he was able to pop it out left, and they get a nice first down gain on it. And uh, Kemmich look to continue to uh, add to this lead. Well, this kind of field position is, is very hard to stop. Very hard to stop. Hard to stop an offensive power like Midland. Williams takes the handoff, finds the edge. Good seal block by Cooper. And Williams is able to scoot ahead for another Kemmich first down. Good downfield blocking by right? number one Cooper. Allowed him to get that extra yardage to move the chains. All on the 46 yard line here as we approach the four minute mark of the first quarter. Clock is rolling. Outstanding crowd here on this homecoming Friday night. It's just a spectacular October day here in Midland. Williams again driving ahead. Finally hauled down, but not after another first down. You know, Dave, the interesting thing is here, I've only seen him run once for less than 10 yards. Yeah. I mean, he just gets up into that hole and turns. And he, he's not a big guy, but he's deceptively strong. He runs with, with 
a surprise and power. They make that initial hit, and uh, it's almost like Saginaw expects them to haul him down. That was one thing uh, Coach Metner was concerned about was the mass of their defensive front, and knew they were going to have to execute well to gain yardage, the and they have so far. Williams again up the middle, explodes, and very close to another first down. See, there may be mass up there, but they're not moving. They're, they're getting they're, moved. They're, they're, they're getting, yeah, they're moving out. That, and they're having success running on that left side with uh, Fisher and Dostal, also having success on the right side behind Stern and Schnurr, and also Rapanis, the center, getting a good explosion off the ball as well. Second and short, gross back to pass. He's going deep for the end zone and is almost hauled down. It was intended for DeLong. Just broken up. DeLong was able to get his hands on it, but it was good defensive good play, defensive play by, by, uh, by Southward of the Trojans. So to bring up a third and one, that was a situation where they had uh, one yard to go for the first. So they thought they'd try to hit the home run. Uh, Chemix confident in their running game to be able to pick up this first down. Cooper joins Williams in the backfield. It's Williams. He does get the first down. Still on his feet, driving ahead, and finally hauled down Williams by Vance Martin. Good for a first down. Again, that, uh, that right side of that line is blowing open holes. Kemick on the move down to the 19 yard line. 244 remaining in the first quarter. He just joined us. Midland scored quickly twice. Saginaw responded with a long 95 yard kickoff return. The Kemicks are marching again. Grows back to pass. There's three receivers to the right. It's a little screen pass. Oh, Williams just unable to pass. haul Williams it in. Brings up second down for Midland. Good play design there. They had the three right. Three receivers out to the left. Brought Williams out of the backfield with plenty of blue blockers in front of him. That was a touchdown. Just unable to haul it down. So it brings up second and 10 for the Chemex. Another factor here, that Trojan defense has been on the field a long time. Long, long time. And, and Almost this entire no, first quarter. Exactly. And, no hope of getting off. <laughs> Williams still on his feet. Drives ahead for Nine five Williams. yards. Boy, that was a case. There was not much of a crease there, but he was just able to find it and scoot through for a decent pickup on second down. It'll bring Tech up third and five as we are at two minutes to go in the second quarter. There's a bunch, uh, three receivers bunched to the right. Gross back to pass, looking downfield, throws to the end zone for ear, broken up. Good defensive play. That was Addison, who had scored the Trojan touchdown with a big defensive play. Not a bad look for the Chemics. That ear is a very big target out there. Kind of throw it up high, a la Calvin Johnson, hoping he can bring it down, but uh, Trojans equal to the task there. Bring up fourth and five, and uh, the Chemex are going for it. It'd be a long five, could maybe even call it six. Gross fakes the handoff. Looking downfield, he's got a man. Oh, overthrows Alex Welter, he was open. He had a shot at the first down, maybe a touchdown, but uh, just overthrew him. It was a throwback pass, and then wide open, just overthrew it. And That's really the first bad pass we've seen. I mean, we, we've seen some incomplete passes, but they were good passes. That's the first pass, bad pass that he's thrown. So the Trojan defense stiffens. It's still 14-6 here with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. And with a dangerous runner like Addison, Trojan could just be a play away from evening this up. Kevin
The defensive front shifting back and forth, trying to confuse that offensive line. Here's the pitch right and still on his feet. Whoa, that, he showed great quickness. That was Marquise Goodman. Looked like he may be hauled down for a loss, but uh, good, quick lateral movement. Picks up seven. Little pitch play. Breaks a couple of tackles That's there. Right, it's simply him. He just broke tackles. So Midland uh, trying to hold Saginaw here. Second and three. We're in the last minute of play of the first quarter. Handoff up the middle, not this time. That was Addison, and he's just uh, swarmed hey, by a sea of blue. A defensive line no for the Chemex. Jared Lachance, number 20. Number 12, Colin Coltson, 36. Tanner Dement, and 61. Azariah Porter, you mentioned that linebacking unit in the secondary at safety. Number 10 is Jordan Wilson. Number two, Andy Russell. And uh, also Luke DeLong seeing some action defensively. Brad Belson and Cody Snyder seen a lot of action at the cornerback position. Third and three for the Trojans. Quarterback keeps it. Tries to drive ahead, and he will pick up the first down. Good, strong run. Looked like they were going to haul him down for a loss, but he picks up the first down as uh, Porter makes the tackle. And that will conclude the first quarter of play here at Midland Community Stadium with the Chemex on top 14-6. to six. You're watching this uh, Midland High ball game on MPS TV 98, and uh, we'll be right back after this message. Want to get in the game? Join MCTV as an excess TV producer and produce programs like baseball, basketball, football, and, and more. more. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to get started. Get in the game and let's produce a program. All right, Billy, great job on the uh, our message. And... Uh, Star is, see. Born. Star, star is, star is born. born. There's no question. No but, question about it. The star is born right there. <laughs> you know, Dave, we take a look at this first quarter. I don't think Saginaw can in any way in practice duplicate what Midland is doing on defense. They're low. They're fast. They're coming so hard that really they're in the backfield. Saginaw's advancements have only come through great individual effort by the running backs and quarterback. There's a handoff to Addison. He's got plenty of room there. Makes a great move. And finally run out of bounds. Uh, Addison uh, knocked out by Alexander, but a big pickup. He's the kind of runner, he's fluid. He goes faster than he looks like he's going. You know he's, what I mean? he's, he's going fast, Dave. <laughs> he's going I gotta tell you, he's going. If when everybody else looks like they're in slow motion, <laughs> he's, going, he's going fast. Because slow motion was he's the... <laughs> he's just got those uh, nice strides. And uh, yeah, next thing you know, he's run uh, 20 yards. So Saginaw High into Midland High territory at the 47. Trojans on the move. Addison again. This time he's uh, tripped up immediately. And off to Addison. Knocked down by Jordan Wilson. Wilson, the sophomore. A lot of sophomores uh, seeing a lot of action for Minton High. Wilson, one of them. You mentioned Luke DeLong with earlier touchdown pass, and Jakari Cooper, also a sophomore for Midland High. All key components of this team. DeLong seeing a lot of action on defense as well as as a receiver. Second and eight. Back to pass, swing pass, overthrown. Look, 
He was looking for Addison. Russell was right there in coverage. And so it will be third down and a long eight. That was, that was good coverage by Russell, but also you had Midland stunning into the play and the quarterback just being under a little bit of pressure. And you just, when you're under pressure in that, you have to get back a little bit in order to throw that ball. He was, he was, he was going backwards and trying to complete the pass. It just doesn't work. You got to get under control. Coach uh, Eric Metner, Kimmick's head coach, had mentioned that uh, one point of emphasis, they wanted to play fast on defense. Which, uh, um, get some pressure into the quarterback, do a good job of tackling and be aggressive and uh, just trying to confuse and make the Trojan rush. And there's a good example of making the quarterback throw a little quicker than he wanted to. So third and long here for Saginaw High. Interesting little spread formation. It's the first time we've seen this. And Saginaw and will call a timeout. There is a little bit of confusion. I think confusion on both sides a little bit. Midland had, uh, had a quick change their coverage as a, one guy was left open. But uh, you can tell that Coach uh, Durrett just didn't like what he saw from the formation for his his Trojans. Coach Durrett is making a return to the coaching ranks this year. He was an outstanding football coach at Saginaw High in the 90s and uh, around the, the turn, and then went into administration, became the principal of the school. Uh, they've struggled in football. They know how important football and athletics are at Saginaw High. So they had him come back to kind of resurrect this program. Uh, and it's surprising to me that he doesn't have more out because there are a lot of talented athletes mm -hmm. in Saginaw. Yeah, we, that's uh, demonstrated each year on the basketball court, that's for sure. So here we go, third and a long eight for the Trojans. Quarterback keeps it. He's got room to run. He cuts up. He's got the first down still on his feet. Cuts ahead. Finally hauled down by Alexander, but a big pickup on third and long by Raymond Beatty, and the Trojans continue to move. We're at 10.41 remaining in the second quarter. That plays the mainstay of the spread offense. Spread them out, run a little bit of cross buck, get your, get your linebacker out of the way, and let the quarterback go one-on-one. -on -one. Get the receivers good, good 10 yards yeah. downfield, and then they start blocking. And they, they just get in your way. To get in the way of the defender. So Addison in the backfield along with Mason this time. And there's a whistle. Yeah, there's a flag on the play. It's a false start in Saginaw. So they've been able to avoid the penalty flag. Or that will turn uh, first and 10 into a first and 15. You sense that those kinds of mistakes are probably going to hurt Saginaw a lot more than they would hurt Midland. But we will see Bob Hartley, longtime volunteer on the sidelines for the Chemics on that chain crew. Bob, a uh, mainstay in, Mid in Midland Athletics for many years. He's a Midland County Sports Hall of Famer, Coach. Yes, he is. So Well-deserved. Well-deserved, well absolutely. Going deep, and that is caught. Oh, and then it is going to be called incomplete. For a minute, I thought maybe they'd called that a fumble. For the but uh, Roden had it momentarily. And then I think it was knocked loose and uh, in the, close to the yeah, turf. In the, in the hassle to get the ball, the tussle to get it, the ball got bumped. It was a good play, though. Good Roden, play. Roden should have kept it. He was up in the air, and he had good control over it. Similar to their very first offensive right. play, where right. they just kind of threw it up and hoped Roden can make a play. So second and 15. Ball in the 33. Big pass under heavy rush, throws it out again, and 
broken up again. Had a man momentarily, but good defensive play by Andy Russell. And it'll bring up third and long. You know, the, the, the beauty of Midland secondary, they play man to man, straight man to man all the time. But they get beat. But they recover so fast. They may get beat, but they recover. They get their hands on the ball. Uh, they, they do a terrific job back there playing man to man against uh, most of the time you're really overmatched. The last two plays, case in point to what you're talking about. Twice yeah, both Saginaw times. could have had it inside the 10 yard line. Instead, it's third and long. Well, if he caught that pass, it was a touchdown. But again, they're playing a press man to man. They now got, they, they have safeties back there to, to help out. Back to pass, he's under heavy rush. This time he is gonna be brought down for the sack. And he fumbled the ball on the Chemex recover. Did not see the ball come loose. But a great defensive play. That, that was a real hit. 12 I, Colton I, in on that play. I would have fumbled that one. That was a real hit. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, I would. You would have? Oh yeah, that was a hit. That must have been a that hit. Was a, that, was a, that was a good licking. So a big turnover created by the Chemic defense, and that was one of those where it, in fact, was created by the defense. A big pop, the ball comes loose. So instead of the Trojans having a chance to tie the game, the Chemics will take over at the 36. Now, usually Midland's done something on this play. Williams. And that, that I'm usually well, used to seeing Midland throw Williams the ball out. You know, they get, get a turnover. They immediately go for the throat. James picks up four with 9.20 to go in the first half. Yeah, Coach, you were saying you wanted to see Williams uh, tote the pigskin a lot today, and he sure has. Racking up some big yardage here in the first half. Williams and Cooper, the two setbacks. It's Cooper this time on a counter. Still on his feet, but uh, brought down nicely by Beatty. See, here's the thing. Midland is allowing Saginaw to kind of hang around a little bit. And the longer they hang around a little bit, the better they're going to get. And the more enthused they are that they can continue to play at the game. Midland's got to put Saginaw away. It's only 14 to 6. It's 8.29 in the second quarter. Uh, if, if they allow them to stay close, Saginaw will get excited and start to play real football. Bunch of lineup. Alexander's got the ball. Drives ahead. He's got a first down. So a new look for the Chemex. Just uh, all bunched up. And it was Michael Alexander, the ball carrier. As that young Chemex fan looks on, excited for her team as they get another first down. Alexander, it's his, just his sixth carry of the year, but he averages seven yards a carry. He added on to that average right there as he brings it into Chemic territory at the 47. Williams got a hole, cuts up, good tackle by Beatty, but not before he picks up six yards on the carry. Tackled by number seven, Beatty for the Trojans. Beatty, definitely an impact player for this Trojan yes, he team. Is. Yes, he Besides is. being he quarterback, a, he's he making some a lot plays. Of, he, he and Addison make a lot of plays. So bring second and three. Kemet's hoping to add to this lead here in the second quarter. Enough to Williams off the right side. He's got a first down as he gets down to the 36, following the right side of that Chemic offensive line. Well, he just got right in their pocket and ran right with him. Beatty and Robinson on the stop for the Trojans. That's Zach Stern. He's, he, he's making some big blocks he out is. there. I mean, he is making some big blocks. Stern having a big game here on the offensive line. Well, most of that line is. Williams off the left side this time. Spun down after uh, 
a five yard gain on first down. Steve Roberts with the tackle. You almost sense when they hold him to five yards, it That's seems a like a victory for Saginaw, but well, he's been five running. yards on first down is a good gain. That time off the left side, we going to keep mentioning these offensive linemen, Jacob Dostel, that left tackle, and Nate Fisher, the left guard. Blowing open some holes here. Back to pass is Gross. He's under pressure. Looks for Ear. He's got him. Hauled in by Ear. He's, if he hadn't stumbled, he may still be on his feet headed for the end zone, but uh, still a big first down pickup down to the 16-yard line. That was a terrific pass and a great catch. Had some good, zip on good that route. Ball. Well, Ear was in trouble. The receiver had him, and Ear just broke away from the receiver. And, and that's the mark of good receivers, when you can make that separation from the guy who's defending you. Kemix driving down the field once again. Williams off the right side. He's got a hole, still on his feet, and he is close in the end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown Will Williams. What a run. He had an initial hole, and he just kept spinning and turning and grinding ahead. Finally, hauled down right at the goal line in for the score. You know, you got to get people in front of Williams in order to stop him. If you just go to the side of him, he's going to run right by you. And Saginaw just doesn't get anybody in front of him. See, everybody's on the side of him. So a guy drags him down. Well, he makes a great spin here and gets into the end zone. Another, Excellent run. Another big hole blown open by Schnur and Stern. Extra point is up and good. Extra point is good. And the Chemex, just like that, go up 21-6 to six with 5.49 remaining in the first half. So Saginaw knocking on the door, getting so close to tying the game, coughs it up, and the quick strike offense of the Chemex comes right down, and uh, it's got to be demoralizing well, for Saginaw. Well, you've you got to avoid turnovers. You can't allow the ball to get on the ground. You can't throw interceptions. you just got to have the patience to drive the ball down the field. And Saginaw coughs it up. Midland takes advantage of it like they always do. Will Williams with his 12th rushing touchdown on the season. And he is putting up some big numbers here in the first half. And then Will will be kicking off once again. We don't have time of possession stats, but uh, they are significantly in Midland's favor. Really, Saginaw had that their last drive was the only really sustained drive they've had where Midland's uh, marched consistently up and down the field. Fielded at the one yard line. This time, nothing doing. Alexander says, uh-uh, Addison. Went to the house last time, but not this time. Michael. Alexander, a senior linebacker, having a phenomenal season. And that guy is everywhere on He defense. makes a lot of, well, he's on your, he's on Addison all night, so it's a pretty good bet he's gonna be around the football. You know, David, just looking at the roster, and, and this is an interesting stat. Saginaw High has three ninth graders and seven 10th graders on your varsity. So 10 of their 27 players are ninth and 10th graders one third of the team. Well, I guess you can look at when you said Durrett trying to build it back up, he, maybe he's getting some of these younger guys involved. You know, the Midland High JV beat Saginaw yesterday 40 to nothing. Oh, nice run. Oh, a tremendous run by the quarterback. Alexander had him and uh, Beatty, he's got some Beatty strength. Spins away, broke some tackles, and that broke is one tackles. tough six-yard six pickup. Yeah, this four. is not exactly what you want. A little option play. Alexander is in on the play, does not wrap him up. Again, side tackle, does not wrap him up, and now 
that's not normal for Midland to see one player making a tackle. It's more like where's the rest of the guys? You know, I mean, you know, usually it's such gang tackling, and they take such pride in that, that gang tackling. Beatty is a uh, he's he's a husky dude. He's a uh, doesn't look he's not frail out there. He does have some power. Addison, the ball carrier, he spins, but he's going to pick up maybe a yard before. There's that game tag that you were exactly, talking about. Exactly. Tackle was made by number 66 for Midland, Brandon Delaney. But you know, Dave, I want to tell you something. Saginaw has slowed this game right down. I mean, the score is 21 6, 420 to go in the, first, in the, in the half. Saginaw slowed the game down, which is exactly what they want to do. They want to slow the game down, keep it manageable. Four minutes to go in the second quarter. Delaney on that last tackle for the Chemex. It's third and three. Trojans do not want to give up this ball. But a swarm of blue, and it looks like they're going to have to give up this ball. Okay, that's a silly play, running the pitch against Midland. I mean, you just, no gain on the play. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere. Made by you might as well just go back and just say, okay, here, we'll just take it. <laughs> Midland will call timeout to stop the clock with 3.52 remaining in the half. And Saginaw will almost assuredly be forced to punt it here. Midland will probably get the ball in pretty good field position with a chance to add to this lead. It's very important that Midland does add to this lead in this in this possession right here. To be able to win to the half, 28-6, uh, demoralize. I mean, you, you figure 352, they should score, get the possession, get down the field, score, go into halftime. Saginaw High is more demoralized. They come out in the second half, and they're in trouble. At 21-12 or 21, even 14-6, which it was just recently, now Saginaw High is enthused and when the locker room get fired up. Now they're on the brink of uh, they're on the brink of disaster right now. <laughs> there's no there's I wasn't no gonna question. say it quite that well, way, but I mean they're on the brink of they are on the brink of disaster. There are points in the game when you as a coach recognize we are in trouble. And unless we do something about it, we're gonna get blown out of here. So this could be the tipping point right well, here. Well I think we could see a block pun here. Baby with the punt, line drive kick. Williams has a lot of green in front of him. Good block. He's got room down the left side. Shows that burst of speed and brings it all the way down to the 29 yard line. Got a great block initially by Brady Belson, number nine. And he used it, just uh, accelerated down the left side. Terrific quickness out of Williams right there. And again, now the ball's on the 29 yard line. 30 yard line ready to go. You've got three minutes and 40 seconds to, to do something. And there's probably no doubt they're going to score. In my mind. Plenty of time, no question about that. Saginaw's tired. I mean, I, I can see that, you know, they have a lot of two way players. Uh, their hands are down on their hips and, uh, and they're, they're gasping for air right now. Well, Midland's had the ball the vast majority of this first half. Here comes a little flare screen out over there. Gross, he's going deep, looking for Cooper, overthrows him. Cooper tried to position himself for the catch. One thing you can say about Gross on the ones he's missed, it's been where only the Midland guy can get it. So he's not really risking the interception. No, no, even the bad pass that he had down in the other corner, uh, nobody else was going to catch right. that. So that's a... Uh, um, Solid uh, play. Oh, I'm, real, I'm really impressed. Year. I'm impressed with him. I'm impressed with the touch that he has on the ball. Williams off the right side. It's down to the 35. Brought down by Beatty. Clock is running. 3.15 to go in the half. Big third down right here. Williams off the right side again, and he's going to get the first down. 
I love that little spin fall. Gives him another two, three yards. Beatty with the tackle again. As I said, a steady dose of Williams is exactly what you need to get him to get his legs going. If you want to rest him in the second half, go ahead. But you need to get him where he gets, you know, running backs need to get tired. And they need to run and run and run. And, and sometimes the more they run, the better they're, the better they get. He didn't get the first down, fourth and inches. They have the power uh, lineup in there. Off the right side again, Williams with the first down. Follows the lead block of the double fullback formation of Alexander and Wilson. That right side is, Midland's just dominating that right side. Absolutely. That's there every play. This time they do move the chains, ball on the 15. See the Kemic band getting ready for their halftime performance. Hoping the offense can produce some points here late in the half. 2.20 remaining in the second quarter. Again, that power backfield employed by Midland. Alexander this time right up the middle, just to the right. Cuts up. Touchdown, Kemix. Okay, power that, run by Alexander for the touchdown. That was a linebacker. That's linebacker. Running the football into everybody. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what he did. He said, okay, I'm going to knock you down. I'm going to knock you down. I'm going to run you. He ended up, uh, it, it was just a linebacker running the football with skill. And he's going to take the football here. Okay. And let's see now. Where can I hit, find somebody to hit? Okay, yeah, I'm going to go. All right, you're dead. Right, and he runs right up in there. He runs through tackles. Poor tackling by Sagan. Instead of going to the right where it's yeah. a clear path, right, he's right. not going to hit somebody right. on the way. <laughs> exactly. So Midland with the uh, quick strike again. Extra point again. Good by Wander. Wander a big leg for the Chemix. And now it is 28 to 6 with 2.05 to go in the half. Now I will tell you this. If Saginaw's not careful, Midland will get another score. I was about to say the it's, scoring may not be done. It's not. There's plenty of time for a possession both ways. Plenty of time. Saginaw may be wise just to run the ball and count your losses here. And if you throw it up and stop the clock, you could potentially give Midland a chance to get that ball back. On the other hand, they need some points. So we'll see what Durrett decides here. Metner going over the kickoff strategy. Midland over the years is noted for, they don't always just uh, kick it deep. Sometimes they'll do that little pooch kick to see if how the receiving team will react. Well, this would be a real good time to try it out because if you want to get one more possession in, and you, and you take a look at the, the, the alignment of Saginaw High, uh, right around the 20, which is their t between 20 and the 15, which is their favorite place for that. It's wide open. So Wander does kick it around there a little bit shorter. Received at about the seven, and uh, Goodman tried to stay in bounds, but instead uh, hits the sideline, and so Saginaw will have it way back at the 11. So an effective kickoff by Wandor. And we'll see what Saginaw does here with two ticks over two minutes to go in the second quarter. Midland in firm command. You can see the Midland High students enjoying the game as well as all the homecoming festivities of this past week. And we'll see those festivities at halftime as well as they crown the king and queen. Handoff and blown up. Number 36, Tanner Dement in on the stop for about a five yard loss. He just had a clear Number path. Just, just into the backfield, a clear path, untouched. Tackle made by number 36, Tanner Diamond. Number 61, Azariah Porter-Coyne. So the clock is ticking here. Second and long. Yeah, Diamond was uh, 
He almost took the handoff on that play. He was in the backfield immediately. Saginaw taking the time here. Quick handoff to the fullback this time. Shows a good burst. Alexander but, uh, recovered. He he was on the stunt, and he just ran. And because he was on the stunt, they they bumped him. He ran by him, and then Alexander recovered and made the tackle, which is a pretty good play. About eight yards for Mason. Time bring up third and long. Millen will call a timeout here. Good call by Metner with uh, 107 to go in the half knowing that if uh, they're able to stop the Trojans here, they will indeed get the ball back in good field position. So this coverage of Midland High football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation studio training class on uh, the second Saturday in October. That's October 12th or in November on the 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. As you can see on the screen, you can call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV Studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. You can learn more about MCTV at www.midland-mi.org backslash MCTV. And you can follow MCTV on Facebook. So here we go, third and seven for the Trojans. We desperately want to pick up the first down here because you can just sense, you know, Midland's going to get that ball back in good field position. Well, they're in the spread formation again. There's probably going to be a pass. I don't know. Addison will take the, Addison the handoff. On. Trying to get the edge, not going to happen. Good defense again by the Chemex. And Matt again, McInerney on the stop and Alexander also. Now I'd really be surprised because Midland could have blocked any one of the punts up at that point. But we're now going to see uh, whether or not they're going to go for it or not. I would. Ball inside the 10. What have you got to lose? Go for the block punt. Exactly. A minute to go in the half. I suppose even if you don't get it, even if there's a roughing penalty, it's still going to be tough for Saginaw to come down and score. So really either way, they're probably going to have pretty good field position with the chance to put some more points on the board. And that offense has just been explosive tonight. I mentioned, I mentioned Tanner Gross a lot on the season coming into this game. He's completing 61% of his passes, 70 out of 115. 1,103 yards, eight touchdowns against just four interceptions. So having a very solid season is the senior. And so Beatty back to punt. Beatty is going to be the tired guy at the end of this day. High snap and almost got it. Williams will take the punt on the fly. It's hammered at about the 34, but great field position for the Chemex. Colin Coltson, number 12, almost got it, but then did a heads up play to make sure he did not rough the, the kicker. It's close. As he pulled back on that. And also a heady play by uh, Williams to catch it on the bounce on full speed. And remember, a lot of times you talk about hidden yardage. Or if he lets that exactly. go, the ball goes exactly. back to the 50 probably. So kind of a free 15 yards right there as the Chemex will try to score again with 51 seconds to go in the half. Three receivers out Four to the receivers, left. Four receivers, quad to the left. Gross, throws downfield, Williams is open. Oh, just unable to haul it in. Gross was under heavy pressure. And uh, Gross took a shot by Johnny Barney. Probably threw it a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Williams uh, racing open just out of his grasp. Gross took a hit on that play. And uh, bring up second and 10, 45 seconds remaining in the half.
Cooper in motion. He's going to take the handoff on the sweep. And he's going to get out of bounds after about five. Uh, it's going to be a late hit on the play. By Cooper. Beatty hits out Cooper out after he was out of bounds. The official on this sideline threw the yellow flag, and I think that is going to cost Saginaw. Beatty, uh, especially the way he reacting, you can tell. That is going to be marched it, off against You know, Beatty is, Beatty is complaining a little bit, but the point is Personal foul on the, the other defender was forcing the ball carrier out of bounds. And Beatty was coming up in control to make a hit. So he doesn't know where out of bounds is. Right. So he comes up and makes the hit, and he has to recognize where out of bounds is, which means he was out of control. We'll bring first and ten for the a from the huge penalty here. It would have been third and five. Instead, it is first and ten from the 15 with 39 seconds remaining. Kemmick's knocking on the door. Put, a lot, put up a lot of points this quarter. Looking for more. Throws back to pass. Touchdown. In the corner for Cooper. Got him inside the five. Yeah, that was a great close. Pass is good from Gross to Cooper. That was a touchdown that was that was saved. There was Addison on the tackle. Yeah, Addison made a great play over there in the corner because that was a touchdown. Another pass thrown only where Cooper could catch it. He goes up, halted in with his hands. And Will Williams takes it in for the touchdown. 24 seconds remaining. Another huge hole, and Williams explodes into the end zone for his second score of the, of the evening. And what a big touchdown for Midland. Like you said, the Coach, score right it's demoralizing. It has to be. I mean, there you are with two minutes, and there were two possessions. Good use of timeouts by yep. Coach Methner. Great and, uh, clock management. You know, it, right. So he's able to stop the clock twice during that time, give his team a chance. Will Williams catches the punt and is able to return it to the 35, and then that penalty was was very big. That was a free 15. So actually in the whole deal, there were 33 yards in there. The 15 yards from the penalty and the 15 yards from uh, on Williams' return. See the touchdown run again. Look at that massive yeah. hole. Just a tremendous job. Wow. Schnur <laughs> just uh, paving the way. And Dostal out there at number 56. And uh, a know, it was showing some signs of life there for a while, but the last. Half of this quarter right. has been a disaster for this Trojans. In a it was 14-6 just a little bit ago. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's 35-6 and on their way to, our, to more. So the only Trojan touchdown was that 95-yard kickoff return by Addison. Addison and Beatty, where would they be without those two guys? There's the pop-up. And it falls loose. That was close. Beatty able to recover it. Two Saginaw players collided. The ball came loose. Beatty alertly fell on it. If Midland had recovered that, yikes. So... Saginaw may try to put one up deep here just to see if something good can happen, but uh, I'm sure Midland defensively will be playing a little bit softer than normal. Midland defense, as they are every year, just very solid, very well coached, very disciplined. And at the top of the league, top of the where league. they always are. Once again, yep. With uh, second in league in points allowed, and only Dow has allowed fewer. Dow allowing 111 coming in, Midland allowing 
just 118. And uh, Beatty will just take a knee and we'll run the clock out here as this half winds down. And the two teams will head into the locker room with Midland on top. 35 to six, dominating this first half. And uh, before our halftime, remind you you're watching this coming you're football game on MPS TV 98. The Kemet Band would like to thank the entire Midland community for their support of the Kemet Music Discount Card. The band still does have cards available. If you'd like to purchase one, they are $10 and can still be purchased in the Midland High School main office or by getting in contact with an MHS music student or We're director. back to bring you the, the second half like of today's homecoming football game. After a great uh, halftime performance by the Midland High Marching Band, and all the homecoming festivities. Congratulations go out to Jess Walter, the homecoming queen, and Warren Elmer, the homecoming king for 2013. And uh, just a great evening on a beautiful fall night here at Midland Community Stadium. We're heading towards the uh, second half with uh, Midland High in, in control at 35 to six. And uh, we're gonna bring you some of the highlights here from the first half, um, starting with the first quarter as uh, Midland High jumped on top on their very first drive with a touchdown. And we'll take a look at it here. Touchdown pass. Excellent touch, great protection, and a very good, well-designed pattern. Looped along with the touchdown for the Chemex, number three. And uh, now this is Saginaw's very first offensive play of the game. Uh, they go big on the first play. And, and it was a good catch. And again, that's an example there of a 45-yard uh, pattern and a 40-yard arm. And so the, the guy had to come back for it. Giving Saginaw a taste of their own medicine with a deep ball from Tanner Gross to Jakari Cooper into Kemic territory. And then follow that up with a touchdown. A nice run by Gross here around the corner. Makes a good move on the inside. Cutting up good downfield block. And uh, Gross with the touchdown. And then here is Saginaw's only score of the first half. The uh, very dangerous Keon Addison just took the ball left side on the kickoff return. Fouled his blockers and went in for the score. Great speed on the part of Addison. And into the second quarter, Midland High with the uh, touchdown run here by Williams. Great run, great spin at the five. Got in great position and got in the end zone. With another touchdown here. This is Alexander late in the half. In for the score. And then a pass, which would set up another late touchdown. Gross to Cooper again inside the five yard line. And then on the very next play, it was Williams again, really untouched before he got to the goal line. And uh, that late touchdown gave Midland a 35 to six lead. And uh, they are, uh, we said, firmly in command here. Well, Dave, uh, one of the things we talked about is uh, turn away and loose. That's one of our keys to the game. He has 183 yards mm. on the first half. Wow. So he's had quite a night. And that's, uh, I don't think he has any receptions. So those are all right. ground, all, yep. all on the ground. And as I said, every time every time he took the ball, he was running for 10, 15, 20 yards. Oh, big chunks, so, big chunks. That offensive line for Midlands having a phenomenal game. And uh, so a lot of times, a lot of times Williams has, uh, is through the initial line by the time he even gets touched. So let's take a look at the, the keys of the game that we talked about leading into the contest today. And again, Midland just dominates this this number one point 
if you're going to beat Midland, you got to keep them out of that good field position. Saginaw hasn't, Saginaw High hasn't done that. Turn Williams loose, 183 yards. I think he's pretty. He's loose. run loose. He's loose, <laughs> and score early and often. Now they didn't score early, but as the game progressed, they imposed their will on Saginaw, which Midland likes to do. Imposed their will on you, and they scored often. So yeah, that was a pretty good deal. Saginaw High, their turnovers have led to touchdowns. Their inability to run the football. I mean, they just do not <coughs> block the guys off the ball. And really, without any pressure on Gross, they can't control the quarterback. And that's what this is what's surprising to me that you know, there's a lot of times when there's passing situations and there's just nothing going on in that. that Gross is standing back there untouched, has the ability to look for his receivers, wait for his receivers to get open, and then throw him the ball. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, really only on. under pressure on really one play where he took a hit, but other than that, uh, he's had time to survey the field and find his open receiver. And so we'll uh, be uh, heading in here to the second half of play. And uh, boy, I enjoyed those wings for at halftime. We head up here in the press box. I wouldn't know, Dave, I didn't have any. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Um, great hospitality as always here in the Midland press box from Casey Clark and Libby Marsh. They run a tight ship up here in the press box and provide us with some uh, good uh, wings here at halftime. Do you think uh, Libby makes those wings and brings them over? I think she wakes up, works all week on it. You think so? Oh, yeah. I, I bet. No she's question. A good, she's a good cook. No question. And so Saginaw High will receive here to start the second half. Wandor doing the kickoff duties. Try to mention a lot of names for the Chemex. Have not mentioned Ryan Millars, the punter, probably because Midland has not punted yet today. Great kickoff into the end zone. And Addison won't be returning yeah, that one. That Booming that's, kickoff. That's how to stop a kickoff return right <laughs> there. Right. You just kick it, kick in, the it in the end zone. They got to take it out on the 20. Wander's got a big leg. He's a... Uh, has five field goals on the year, and you just get the sense if Midland gets in a, in a tight game late where they need a long field goal, they got a shot at it. A Chemic fan waving to us there, Coach. This first possession for Saginaw is crucial because if they don't do something, Midland will score and it'll be 42-6. And then you're, you're on the edge of a running clock. Fake handoff, and Beatty will keep it. Oh, he explodes up the middle. He's on it out to the races, and he is not going to be caught. Well, I guess yeah, that's pretty quick. I guess quick. that answered that, didn't it? 15 seconds is all that took. How's that for calling it? Score quick. <laughs> Okay, that was simply then. a little quarterback cross buck. Faked to Addison, got rid of Alexander by doing that, and they ran into the secondary. And Saginaw High was spread out. Watch When we look at the replay here, you can see how far. Saginaw High spread them out. Now look at the good blocking by the Saginaw High guys. Now they've stopped blocking, and now it's a foot race. He's, he's, he's got some speed. Yeah, he does. He outran the angle right there uh, in the second line of defense, and then... Yeah. He was gone. Cody Snyder had no chance. Mm -mm. Beatty's a good football player. They're going to go for two. Why not? 35-12 here. Trojans need points and need them fast. Flag on the play. Beatty around to the left edge. That might be on Midland. Two-point conversion is no good. There let the play continue. The play. Flags on both sides of the field. I wonder if Minna was lined up off sides. Nope, it is going to be a false start on the Trojans. It'll be declined, and so the two-point conversion attempt fails. But that's an encouraging sign if you're a Trojan fan. After a disastrous end of the first half, the Trojans show life here to start the second half. 
Yeah, we heard, a lot, plays. we heard a lot about Addison, and uh, he showed some on the kickoff return, but I'm impressed with Beatty. He's made a lot of tackles, and he's made some good passes, and obviously has uh, got explosive speed as well. Well, up until this point today, he's rushed for 188 yards, but he's averaging seven, times, seven yards every time he carries it, so he does have the ability, he just hasn't done much of it. I have a hunch. If I was game planning, I may have him run just a little bit more. 27 carries over uh, six games. You know, you're, that's a limited amount. you got to mm -hmm. figure as a quarterback, a lot of those are broken runs. Right. right. That was not a broken play. No, that, that was, was by a, design. That was well designed. And we'll see if the Chemics respond here. Guess who's kicking off for the Trojans? That would be Beatty. He's also their punter, leading tackler, quarterback. And he drove the bus. Drive kick. <laughs> Williams takes the kickoff, kicks it out to the outside, still on his feet. That initial contact, he picks no up way. another about 12 yards. He does. He picks up more yards, and then all of a sudden, just I'll as he's hit and he's going down, he's going to turn and twist and get the four or five extra. I always thought that about Emmett Smith with the Cowboys. He'd always get two more yards than he thought he should. Almost every time. Williams is a lot like that. Yes, where he is. He just gets, you think the play's over, two or three more yards. Those yards add up over the course of a ball game. So Midland will take over on their first possession here of the second half from their own 41-yard line. Gross back to pass. He's got the long. Got some room. Good close there by Tamar Hart. But a well-designed, well-executed play for the Chemics as they move the chains into Trojan territory. That was a good-looking play right there, Coach. It's called a jailbreak screen. The wide receiver comes back. The other two uh, wide receivers there lead the play. The guard and tackle comes out. And usually it gets pretty good yardage, and then again it did right there. Can't use it all the time, but just enough to keep everybody honest. Midland, a very balanced attack. They give you a lot of looks. Williams, the ball carrier. This is a look Williams they have given carrier. a lot today with he Williams off the right in. side. He is in the hole and so fast. Picks up. He's fun to watch. Yards. He's he is. fun to watch. He is, and uh, he is on pace for a 200-yard rushing game. He's close to that already. As you mentioned, 183 in the first half. Williams off the left side this time. This time he's thrown down, but uh, he's going to be close to the first down marker. Tackled by Hart for the Georgia. And uh, they are... Going to say he's a little bit short. Thought they may take a measurement here, but as you look across the field, you can see it is a little short. And so it'll bring up third and inches. And they're looking right down the line of scrimmage right now. So we'll verify the official's decision. As Midland looks to move the change again. Williams off the right side. Again, another huge hole. And he bust ahead for another seven yards. Well, there's no doubt. You want one yard, go right. Go right. And that, a lot of that has to do with the great blocking on the right side, but Saginaw High is on the right, on that side, standing straight up in the air. Matt Schnur, the right guard, number 68. Zach Stern, the right tackle, number 54. They're having a tremendous game. So credit center, Austin Rapanis, um, outstanding center for the Chemex. They canned off, going to ear, well covered. He tried that same, same screen to the other here. side, but that was sniffed out by the Trojans. And uh, that was Beatty again on the play. They got to throw away from him. Although he, the guy is everywhere. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. 
Second and 14. He said you can't use that too much. It's the second time they tried that play on this drive. Worked great the first time, not so much the second. It's a good play. It's a great yep. play. 33, Ben Elliott, one of the three wide receivers to the right. Gross looking downfield, looking for DeLong, just overthrew him. Pass to DeLong is incomplete. We'll bring up third and 14 for the Just catch. about a step too far, thrown by Gross. But again, if he makes a mistake, it's uh, a mistake where you don't really get hurt bad. Untouched. It's, just, it's I mean, not he's, a he's complete pass, but back it's there. no chance of right. being intercepted. Well, he has a big arm, and he makes good throws. And that's, that's what you want out of your quarterback. His decision-making is excellent. Third and 14, empty backfield for the Chemex. Three receivers to the left, one wide out to the right. Plenty of time to throw, overthrows Williams. Just let him a bit too much. Looks like Midlands may decide to go for it here on fourth and 14. Nope, they're gonna send out the punting unit. Why not keep that field position, make sure Saginaw has a long field. I mentioned Ryan Millar's number 32 is the punter. Millar's to punt for the Kenner. Tanner Diamond is the blocker in front of him. A little pooch punt. He's going to try to get a good roll here, and he does. The ball is going to keep trickling all the way down to the seven yard line. Not pretty, but very effective. That? Just had that line drive hug the sideline. And Millars does a great job of pinning the Trojans deep. Middle and high student section. Excited about their football team. Having already posted their 38th consecutive winning season. That is just incredible. Five and one coming into this contest. Need one more victory to secure another playoff spot. And uh, if they can hold on here in the second half of this one, they will in fact be playoff bound. So the Trojans with a long way to go, but they've shown they can make the big play, they can hit the home run. The counter, it's Addison tripped up right there. That was Alexander. Oh, that's, he saved a big game yes, there. He did. Because yes, Addison he did. may still be running, but he just got a hand on his ankles and tripped him up to about two yards. Saginaw High now has gone to the shotgun spread out formation trying to loosen up the Midland defense, but they still got to block somebody up front. Yep. They, they've I mean, got they some. They just don't. They got some size up they've there. They've got some big fellas. They on just that line. don't block anybody. They lean on you. But like you said, there's a lot of young guys on this team that uh, just need to develop, keep playing in the system, and uh, see what can happen with Saginaw High football. Addison again. Turning ahead. Is, is one thing you want to tell offensive linemen, and that is no matter who you're playing, you must hit or you're going to receive the defender. You, But you must go on off the ball. And, and the general rule is get on the ball, get your hands on them, and then bench press them for five yards. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what you do. You say to them, get your hands on them somewhere inside the framework of the body and then bench press him for five yards. Ben Luzar and Azariah Porter coning on the tackle that last play as it's third and three for the Trojans. Addison, oh great defensive play. That was uh, Russell making the initial play. 
And then in comes Brady Balson to mop him up, number nine. Great defense Midland's, by the Chemics. Midland is not big, but boy, are they quick to the ball. They, they, you just got to love defenses like that. They run to the ball just as fast as they can. Well, that's been Chemic defense no, that, for 30 ab years. Absolutely. 40. Well, in the last couple of years, we've seen some little bit larger. A little bit larger guys. teams. But this team here is 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 really quick to the ball and their down guys are just coming off so hard so Beatty in his own end zone to punt fourth and nine he's faking it oh there's a flag on the play must be a false start on the trojans and uh baby pulled up pulled up lame there he's got a look like he pulled a muscle Midland uh, dodged a bullet there because he had a good chance to get that first down. He took the snap and immediately darted to the left side and he had room to run, but it's gonna be a uh, penalty marked off against Saginaw High. And now the Trojans may have a bit of a problem here as Beatty, quarterback and punter, is shaken up. And he is noticeably limping. <laughs> They're going to send him back there to punt. And he looks like he can barely, barely jog. Yeah, second off, I'm sure, is calling timeout. They, I was about to say, they, they're going to have to call timeout here they and figure to. out what they're going to do. There's going to be a delay of game. If uh, you know, Beatty can't continue, that would be a big piece of this. Trojan offense, defense, and special teams for that matter. 558 remaining in the third quarter. Chemex on top, 35 to 12. We'll check out the uh, replay here. This is that long touchdown run by Beatty. You can see he just exploding through, and then uh, it was see you later, the last 50 yards. We'll see if, uh, if young Mr. Beatty stays in the ball game, and he will. Here's where they attempted that fake punt. Yeah, yeah he so just pulled up right there at the end. Caught his toe on yeah. the turf, it looked like. And so it wasn't really from a collision. He's moving all right now. And so he will punt this time from even deeper in his end zone. Line drive kick. Trying to avoid Williams. Takes a second of bounce, but it'll come to rest around the 44. So great field position for the Chemex here as uh, they try to add to this 35 to 12 lead. Mentioned the uh, mentioning this offensive line for Midland, 56 Jacob Dostel. We we're talking about him and his dad Joe Dostel. We both know is uh, he's a pretty good athlete. He's pretty already. good athlete. Yes, he, very he, good. He plays a lot of city basketball, but he he's noted for being a very aggressive player. All the Dostels were. Yeah. And so here we go. His son having a great season on the offensive line for the Chemex. This time Williams off to the left. Oh, what a move. Oh man, he was headed out to the sideline, cut back, maintain full speed, and picks up another seven yards after the move. It's quite a little jump cut, wasn't it? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful cut. Beautiful Barry Sanders jump cut. action yeah. there. Beautiful jump cut. Well, it's a 31 yard line. He does see the opening, and he's always trying to get into it. Dynamic player. Gross back to pass. Looking for Cooper. Got him. Gonna pick up about five on the play. I like how Cooper just catches that ball with his hands. The ball doesn't come into his body. He goes out and gets the ball. You can tell he's a terrific athlete. Second and five for the Chemex. 5.25 to go in the third quarter. And 
Midland nearing the red zone. Williams again, darts ahead. Oh man, explosive. That was a terrific play by Gross. The ball was snapped to him. It was juggled, fumbled, and he's still able to get the handoff to Williams. And then Williams picks up more. Big chunk of yardage, another big chunk of yardage inside the 10, first and goal, Midland. Well, just inside the nine yard line. Williams in the counter, spin move, but uh, hauled down this time for a minimal game. Tackled, Tackled by Jalen Parham. Yeah, <coughs> again, Two on not to belabor the point, but the number of one-man tackles that are happening on the part of Saginaw High. Very few times do you see more than one guy in on the tackle. Midland will now bring in that power backfield. They're famous for this formation. They keep their main tail back and then two power blockers. This time it is driven into the end zone goes Jordan Wilson. So again, out of that formation, instead of going to Williams, last time it was Alexander to take it for touchdown. This time it's Jordan Wilson, the sophomore, powering in for Pater. Good. What a powerful run right there. Talk about very linebackers strong, running the ball. Very, again, looking for somebody to hit. <laughs> Please just get in my way so I can run you over. <laughs> if I'm out here, I might as well hit somebody. So Wandor again for the extra point. And again, it's good. Extra point is good by Every time, Lord perfect Lord snap, Lord. perfect hold, perfect hit. And Midland now goes on top, 42 to 12. 418 remaining in the third. Here's another look at it. Good really cut back there by Wilson. And then just drives right ahead look, look through for two 10. Trojans. He said, uh-uh, I'm not going to be denied. I don't get the ball very often. When I do, I'm going to score. And so Midland will kick off as they celebrate another score. This powerful offense continues to rack up the yardage and rack up the points. Midland, one of three teams in the Saginaw Valley League North to score over 200 coming into this game. Trailing only Dow's 258. Midland had 221 coming in, but they're adding a lot to that total tonight. And really, I mentioned Dow, Midland Dow on a collision course for the season finale. Good long kick again by Wander. Field at the one by Addison. Sees a crease. There's that speed again. Addison cuts back. Still on his feet. Finally tracked down by Belson. But again, Addison with that explosion. He is dangerous. You can see why Coach Eric Metner was concerned about him coming into this game. Took one back for a touchdown, and that one all the way down to the 29-yard line. That was a real run. You can see the break right in there. He gets up into the chute. Uh, the Midland guy does not gauge his speed. There's a great cut right there to get into the corner, and he got run down. That was a, a good job. Really, the first return, he basically just ran straight down the field. Behind great blocking that time was a lot of good individual effort. And so Saginaw on the 29 yard line. Here's the pitch. Following a good lead block, that's uh, Marquise Goodman. Steve Mason with a nice lead block, that's number 10. It's like uh, running behind a fire hydrant right there. Short, stocky guys is Mason. And so it'll be a first down for the Trojans down to the 18. So just about when you start to think, oh, Midland's getting close to a running clock possibly. Saginaw comes up with a big play. 
and uh, keeps showing signs of life here. Dow High playing Heritage tonight. They're on top 21 to seven in the second half. We have three and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Oh, great defensive play. Ball on the turf, and that was Jared Lachance blowing up the play. Goodness gracious. Got the quarterback as the quarterback was turning the, turn the pitch. Just Look came right this. in the shoot. Oh, and phenomenal just play. Great play. That's that grub position where he just scoots really below the offensive line and immediately gets the leg, got a piece of the ball. Nothing Beatty could do. Causes a major loss. Back to the 38. Bring up second in 29. That's the great fear of any time you call the toss. So what you try to do is you try to make those splits by the guards a little bit tighter so that you don't have that gap that you can jump through. He just went right through. Nobody even touched him. Back pass, and there's Beatty. Still on his feet, driving ahead. What a play by Beatty. Mm, my goodness. Tackle made by Millars and McInerney. For the Millars Chemex. and McInerney on the stop for the Chemex. They'll bring up a third and 12, but uh, could be a lot longer than that. But uh, Beatty with a big play. That guy, he's a football player. Coach number seven. He's a, he's a real player. I think both of those backs are. He's out there competing. It's 30 point spread here, but uh, shows no signs of slowing down. Back to pass, he's going for the corner of the end zone deep. Broken up nicely. Brady, Bradley Belson. Oh, they're gonna call a flag late. Oof, tough call. Bradley Belson goes up to knock the ball loose. Maybe he got some of his body on again, that. Again, Dave, there's an example. The defender is beat. The ball is in the air. The defender recovers, get back into it. And as he gets back into it, you know, as, a, as an old defensive back coach, you say, oh, well, you did, you did exactly what you were supposed to, break up the pass. If there's a penalty, there's a penalty. Break up the pass. Got, definitely got his hand on it. Uh, There's a replay, replay here. here. Yeah, this will be a, a good replay. See, he's beat right now. Now he's recovered. I, I think he may have hit. May have had his hands. the end zone. He may have had his uh, uh, had his hand on the receiver's arm initially. So it'll bring up a. Uh, It's third and about two. Addison, the ball carrier, he is hit immediately by Alexander. Brought by Addison. He'll bring up four down. Chance in also in on that stop. Big play there. Edison getting the, the carry. Trojans desperately need a score here. A minute to go in the third quarter. Midland on top, 42 to 12. Here the crowd scoring the defense. To put up a stand here on fourth down. Pretty good bet the quarterback's gonna keep the football. He does, driving ahead, and he is not going to make it. Alexander around the ankles. Also McInerney in there on the stop. Well, Addison was not in the game, so that left only, one guy. That one guy, right? And Alexander, I'm sure, recognized that and did a great job. Didn't allow himself to get 
caught. Alexander's a pretty good linebacker. Yes, he is. Call his name a lot. And also makes big plays. Welter, the fullback, number 83. Lead blocker for Williams, who drives ahead. Another good first down pickup. I used to love homecoming games like this. Well, first off, if you're in front, it's good. But you're 42-12, fourth quarter, homecoming, big crowd, all the kids are going to play. Right. And so that's an important thing on homecoming. You, know, you just want to get everybody in the game, let them have an opportunity to show their wares in front of their fans and friends and family. All right, fans, as this third quarter winds down, and we switch ends of the field with Midland on top, 42-12. to 12. You're watching Midland High Football on NPS TV 98. We'll uh, take a look again at our at this uh, quick message, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, that this homecoming football game will be broadcast on NPS TV. Spins, drives, touchdown, Pemex. Good, hard hit. Want to get in the game? Join MCTV as an excess TV producer and produce programs like baseball, basketball, football, and, and more. more. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to get started. Get in the game and let's produce a program. And we'll be you know, right I just, back. I, I just got a message that Billy, our producer uh -huh. who did that, uh, has signed an agent. <laughs> he and did? Is in, yeah, I, I'm signed not an agent surprised. And, uh, well, his phone is probably blowing up right now. Really, really. He's Think got, about it. He's, he's already got a Twitter account, and, you know, of course, he's always been on Facebook, so <laughs> he is, uh, he's the man right now. He is. He is. I mean, he's got an agent, and uh, next thing you know, we'll be doing cutting the record. And our ratings are going to be sky high. Boom, and we'll, sure. we'll beat the good wife Sunday night. <laughs> Absolutely. The officials trying to figure out where to exactly place the ball. Notice uh, Coach Josbeck was the homecoming grand marshal. Well deserved. He did. Well deserved. Yes, well deserved. He's been a mainstay in the Chemex sidelines for a long time, over 50 years, that's for sure. Yeah, he played days in the late 50s. Late 50s. and Coached for a long time here. Great success as the head coach of the Chemex. Both football and track. Gross, back to pass. Looks downfield, I think he threw that one away. He was getting under pressure, nobody really open. And so uh, just threw that one out of bounds. Live to fight another day, it'll be third and five from the 16 yard line. We say that about Billy on that uh, promo there, but Midland is a Great community, as you know. He lived here a long time, and uh, there's a lot of great things about it. And it, really, MCT MC is one of the reasons is, that it is. Is one of the best. Brings one you of the best. All volunteers. Yes. And they do just such a great job. They do. They bring you lots of the sporting events as they showed there, but much, much more. This is pass is complete to DeLong for the first down. The long run out of bounds, but a good pass right on the numbers to DeLong, and Midland moves the chain. That pass right there is Tanner Gross's strength, right there. He's able to throw that, that ball. Once he sees that ball, he throws it. It's a very catchable ball. Point is up, and you, you see his receivers, they have nice hands. Well, a lot of that has to do with the way the quarterback throws the ball. He, just, he throws a light ball, not a heavy ball. He's decisive. As soon as he sees it there, Bam, he delivers it. First and 10, Midland High. Gross, looking downfield. He's going deep. Oh, just beyond the outstretched hand of Ben Elliott. Penalty. There's a flag on the play. It's in the vicinity of holding. We shall see. It's on Midland. 
not been a whole lot of penalties this game. 11.40 remaining in the contest. This will be stepped off against the Chemex. Officials deciding exactly how to administer the foul. Second, it's going to take the penalty, which obviously they should. And that's a biggie. Really, 15 must be from the this spot of the foul. Spot foul. So 10 uh, yards from the spot of the foul. So sends Midland back 15 yards, bring up first and 25. First down and 25. Yeah, we talked about the showdown towards the end of this uh, this season, Midland High and Dow High, both five and one coming into today's action. I expect both of them to be seven and one coming into that last game. Williams off the right side. He's got room. Cuts back again to add a, a few more yards. He is racking up some serious yardage tonight. And in that last game, Tackle I'm going to say first to 40 wins. First to 40, yeah, you could be right. Both first, teams first with explosive offenses. First, first team gets 40 points wins. That would be, uh, both teams are seven and one coming into that one. This place is going to be packed. It's going to be packed either way, really, but uh, there's going to be a lot of anticipation for that game. Gross, back to pass. Thought about looking for DeLong. Instead throws it away. DeLong was open momentarily. If, I think if he threw to him, he may not, wouldn't have gained much yardage. So Gross held on to it and then just uh, threw that one away. Here's an example of young, inexperienced receivers. He's in trouble. You're out there, and they both stood. They got to come back to that quarterback. Give him a chance to make a completion. So it's hard. That's a hard thing to teach. It, you know, you get veteran receivers that don't do it. Just a knack you you learn as you as you keep playing. Third and sixteen for the Chemex. Gross back to pass. Fires for ear. He's got him and first down, Chemex. Ear caught the ball, and then he knew where the stick was. He just drove ahead and gets uh, enough for the first down, and the Chemex move the chains. Right here. Terrific effort. And that was a great pass. See, that's right there is the strength of Gross. It, that's the pass that he is the most dangerous on. So it's kind of the longer passes, mid range outs. Yeah, the longer passes have a little bit too much air on them. And, and they're good passes, but they do have a little bit too much air. These passes don't have any air. No. They're, they're thrown on a line, but again, very catchable. Three receivers out to the left. Williams runs to the left, slips up. Run by Williams. And uh, maybe we'll give him a yard on that one. Brings up second and 10. Brought okay. down by Elijah Woods. Tackle was made for by number 12, Jalen Park. Midland content just to chew up that clock. Ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter here. Midland offense running on all cylinders. Five wideouts, three to the left, two to the right. Watch out for Williams. Gross, back to pass. Got Cooper, gonna be a little bit short of the first pass down. Is good to Cooper for the Hauls it in, similar to the Tech play we got the first down with the ear, the right. but he was just unable to break loose of the Trojan defender. It'll be third and short. Williams was wide open. He ran right up the seam. Uh, could have just caught and ran in the end zone. Didn't see him. And so that will bring up a third and two. Again, three receivers 
to the left. They're going right. Here, here comes Williams on the handoff. To the right side, he's got the first down. Plows ahead. Again, after initial contact, picks up another three yards. That was a good setup. They said everybody on the short side. And the wide side of the field was over here with only two guys, and they were so far over here, they were completely out of the play. So you knew they were going to go right with it. It was just a matter of which way they were going to go. They weren't going to go left into that short sideline. Clock is ticking. Williams having a monster game tonight. He had 183 at the half. We don't have the official stats, but it's got to be around 250 by now. Takes the handoff again. Gonna get a couple that time. Tackle made by number 12, Harmon, for the Trojans. Oh, on the stop for Saginaw High. Clock winds on down. Eight minutes to go. Midland firmly in command here. Up 42 to 12. Gross back to pass. Has the long first down, Chemex. Tackled inbounds. They stop to move the chains, but then the clock will continue to run. And with that first down, Midland's second unit will uh, head out onto the field. This first team offense getting a great ovation from the home crowd as they should. Played a tremendous game offensively. Ryan Lynch, number 15, he's a junior. He will take the reins at quarterback. Number seven, Jordan Kesmerick, one of the running backs. This handed off to T.J. Cooper, oh another junior, Cooper number 24. This is Tackle what you're talking about, feet. Coach, where yeah, a lot of guys are going to get to play yeah, here. Nolan Nowak, number 48, checks into the game, placing Luke White at the tight end position. Split wide to the right is Bryce Cantek, number 17. Also Derek Grew, number six, split wide to the left. Handoff goes to Kazmarek, number seven. Good run. Very good. Great Bryce effort on the part of Kazmarek, and he's going to move the chains. Found good that hole on the left line. side, and uh, he said, hey, I'm getting my opportunity. I'm going to show what I got. Nice run. So I've, heard, I've heard some good things about Ryan Lynch. I'm anxious to see him throw the football. We'll see. I don't know if we're going to see that or not. Here. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe on the still, third I think he's a pretty good athlete and an excellent backup. This is the counter. Another nice run as Cooper squirts ahead. TJ Cooper on the run for the Jesse Pagtaluna, number 51, was in. Now he checks out. And in comes Luke White. 79, Brendan Price into the game also for the Chemex. Number 64, Warren Elmer as well on the offensive line. Second and about six. It's the pitch left to Cooper, and he's driving ahead. He's close. He's going to be brought down on the one yard line. Good explosive run and great blocking on the left side of that line. Also, Christian Loosemore, number 59, leading the way there for Midland. Here comes Zach. Hurdle off, number 65. Clock running, just over five minutes to go in the contest. First in goal from the one. 
It's Cooper driving ahead and touchdown, touchdown. Chemex. TJ Cooper drives into the end zone and a Chemex score once again, this time I the second it. unit. I love it when the second team does that. They come in, they take over the play. Very few mistakes. No. Good coming off the ball by the line. Running backs ran hard. Uh, not much of a drop off right there. No, very, uh, very efficient. Very good. Well blocked, well run. Great job. And uh, new uh, kicker, it is Bryce Kantek, the uh, junior, will be kicking the extra point. Wandor leg may be tired after all the kicks he had. We're going to give uh, Kantak a shot here for this extra point. Kicks up. Drills Good it. Good kick. No That's doubt. By Bryce Kantak. How many teams 12. have a kicker as good as Wandor? Very few have a, <laughs> that good of a second Second kicker. It's going to be interesting in that uh, last game of the year, Wandor and Kid. Yeah. Kid's an excellent kicker for, for Dow. Dow. Yes. And, uh, you know, both teams have that weapon right there that uh, is going to be very crucial in a game like that. It's going to be fun to do in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Looking forward fun to that. Fun to do. You could just sense uh, as this season progresses, especially, that both teams very strong this year. Both teams just uh, with the one loss, each falling. Uh, in tight ball games at Mount Pleasant, our uh, luncheon the Wednesday before yeah. should be a, a quite a busy place that day. Oh yeah, Midland Sports luncheon, which will be held at uh, at Winston's Pub at the Midland uh, Midland Resort. Make sure you come on out. It's uh, the monthly sports luncheon, and Scantec uh, kicks off. Fielded at the 20 by Beatty, naturally. And a good tackle there by Luke White on special teams. Drills Beatty, great job by Luke White. We are now in the running clock. Now in the running clock, we're talking about that, that luncheon is on Wednesday, October 23rd. The game, the Midland Dow game is on the 25th. So. At Winston's Pub at Midland Resort, it uh, starts at 11.45 to 1 o'clock. We have the Midland High and Dow High coaches to talk about that game. And um, just a $7 lunch, a great lunch over there and a great program. So uh, come on and check, check that out at Winston's Pub on the 23rd. Four minutes to go. Like you said, running clock, 49 to 12, Midland on top. New quarterback in for the Trojans. This is uh, Jalen Parham. And a second team defense, which is yep. great. And uh, good movement to the ball there by them. Cody Snyder comes out and uh, Jackie Mc McCullum checks in, number 19. So for the Chemex, Brendan Ritluski, 35 is out there. 22, Matt and Stacy. Here's the pitch. Oh, he got the edge. Whoa, good speed. Marquise Goodman still on his feet. And he is headed for the end zone. What a run by Marquise Goodman. And so much for the running clock. That ends the running clock. So another big play strike for the Trojans. All their touchdowns been on uh, lengthy plays. This is quite a run. Nice cut back. Yeah, great burst. Just an speed. easy little toss. He's just a sophomore. And number 10 gets out, makes a good block. Yeah. So there's the speed right there. He outran the angle. And then what a cutback. And another cutback. And then he is gone. Wow, that was impressive. Number 
Going for two, lost it in the end zone, overthrows his man, looking for Roden. Parham tried that uh, quick fade, but well defended by the Chemex. Back there, Dakota Costley on the coverage for Midland. So it's 49 to 18. So you think the uh, that Midland Dow first one to 40, you're thinking? First to 40. Well, they're both averaging 40. So, so you got to stay to reason. <laughs> and both play, both play good defense. Both have good quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Both have good running backs. Yep. Caleb Richard is a good receivers. Good, good player. Both have good receivers. Both play tough secondary. Different, you know, different, different styles in the secondary. But um, oh, it's yeah. going to be a good game. It's going to be a great game. It is. And if they're both seven and one, it's a pretty good bet. They're either going to meet in the first or second week of the right. playoffs. Yep. You know, somewhere in there and probably be here. Be a good chance. Well, it's got to be here. <laughs> right, right. It's a good chance they'd be, uh, could be the top two seeds. So. Well, if one is seven and one, that means one will be eight and one. The other will be seven and two. Right. So they probably be second and third seeds. Mm -hmm. Somebody will be nine and oh. Pooch kick, and that is fielded by Kazmarek. Runs up, then he's hauled down. Ball came loose. They're calling him down, though. I wondered about that. Second, I'm not happy with that call, Take but uh, Kazmarek, Kazmarek was spun down. I think he had hit the ground when the ball popped loose. Also, uh, Coming up, uh, Northwood Timberwolves on the October 19th will be hosting Michigan Tech, which should be a great game over at Hans Stadium. That's at noon. Michigan the Tech, the offensive coordinator is uh, Yeider. Yes. And is. doing a great job up there. Yep, he is. From the Yeider family here in town. Yep. Yeider's uh, great community people, that's for sure. Eric played for me uh, back in the late 90s. Great running back and a real student of the game. I hope someday he gets to be the head coach there or someplace. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. The Trojans called timeout here. Um, yeah, so we're looking forward to, to that game. Um, if you want to see some offensive fireworks, uh, Gleak football certainly has that. Northwood with a uh, terrific offense as has has Michigan Tech. Well, there's really Chemic Charlie yeah, when you well go to a, their main running back. When you go to a Gleak game, it's definitely first to forty. <laughs> That's you know what right. I mean? It's definitely first it to is. forty, and it, sometimes you better hope it's first to fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and then Northwood will follow that up on the October 26th, uh, hosting Grand Valley, also at noon over at Hant Stadium. So some, uh, Big some games great in college games yes. coming up. Saginaw Valley, Grand Valley. Yep. And in the Axe Bowl on at Saginaw Valley on uh, tomorrow Sa night. Sa yep. Um, tomorrow night. It's the uh, October 12th. So yeah, a lot of great college action in the area coming up, as well as of course. The great high school action that uh, we see on a week-to-week -week basis here at Midland Community Stadium. Now next week here, uh, Midland plays Bay City Western. Dow goes and plays Bay City John Glenn. Right. So Western is having a down year. It will be very interesting to see how Dow handles John Glenn's wing T offense, full house offense. P.J. Cooper on that carry. He's going to pick up the first down. Cooper doing a great job. Yes, he is. He's got pretty good quickness. Out wide to the right, Jackie McCullum. Pitch to Gesmerick. He's met by a wall of white, but still drives ahead. He's a tough runner. 220 to go in the contest. 
Midland is going to move to six and one, securing that playoff spot. This victory today. Impressive game for the Chemics tonight. Really clicking on all cylinders. The chink was three big plays by Saginaw. I am impressed with Saginaw, though. They haven't quit. They're still playing exactly. hard yes, out there. I that mean, true. that's a, a credit to them, especially after the season they've been having where teams have really laid it on them. But they're still out here playing hard. As Merrick picks up two and he's tripped up. Tackle made by number 62 for the Trojans, Johnny Barton. Taylor Four, 87 in the game for Midland. I don't think you're going to get your chance to see uh, Ryan Lynch put it up here, Coach. I know. He's third and long, but I'm, I'm guessing they'll be content just to milk this clock. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Proves me wrong. Ooh, good, strong throw. Threw it too high. Trying to hit McCollum. Good tight spiral with a lot of zip on that ball. That ball had giddy up. It sure did. Yeah, it did. Lynch just a junior. So he may get his chance next year. We'll see. And punting. Just for the second time this game is Millar's. Almost a snap. It's a uh, Saginaw Trojan got a piece of that one. It was Michael King. Almost the snap and uh, tried to get off quick, but uh, King got a piece of it. The ball will sail out of bounds at the Midland 45 with 53 seconds to go. Brendan Hout, number 26, in on the defensive line for Midland. Lutlewski, we mentioned, also. Brendan's father, Darren, played for me. Yes. Baseball, good, excellent second baseman. Yes. Played on our state championship team. Luke Zimmerman, number 74, on the defensive line as well. Cody Snyder, number eight, in that safety. Pitch right, and uh, boy, another nice run by Goodman. By Goodman for the Nowhere to run, but he's able to scoot ahead for a decent pickup before he's brought down Tackle by, by eight, Snyder, the Stasey and Snyder. Second and three. It could be the last play of the game. We're on to the 22nd mark here. You know, I'll tell you something that always impressed me here. This is the end of the game, and if I look out into the crowd, it's still pretty populated. Yeah. A runaway game. Fans are still here supporting their team. It's uh, quite an accomplishment. Von Roten and Brennan Howard on the tackle. Jacob Goodmanson also in on the stop as the horn goes off. And the Midland Chemics prevail 49 to 18 to improve to six and one on the season. And uh, so a dominating performance here on a beautiful fall night at Midland Community Stadium. This big homecoming crowd treated to a terrific performance by the Chemics. Midland with just the one more game next week here against Bay City Western before it's time for the big showdown with the Chemics. And we're going to take a look at some of the highlights here of the second half as the two teams shake hands. Take a look. This is the big run. Big run by Addison. No, no this is uh, Beatty. Beatty. Shows his breakaway speed. Burst through and pretty good player. Not much. This is uh, the fake punt that uh, 
He kind of, we thought he got hurt on him, but really, I think he just cramped. Yeah, yeah. Their timeout was a good timeout. It gave him a chance to recover from it. Here's that cut back. Outstanding cutbacks. run. What a game did Williams have tonight. Major yardage, two touchdowns. And that's uh, Jordan Wilson with a power run for the score. And uh, that will do it. The Gimmicks in their victory circle. And uh, we are wrapping things up here at Midland Community Stadium. Yeah, this was Dave Marsh bringing you the action along with Frank Aldemore. Midland wins 49 to 18, and we will see you in a couple weeks back here at the stadium for the Midland Dow game. Good night, everybody.